This is Academic Decathlon Worksheet Number 6, Reasoning with Equations and Inequalities. So uh, this worksheet really works on can you see what type of problem that you are working with and the techniques are the tools that you need to use in order to solve for the variable. So in this situation, we see that we've got multivariables, variables on both sides, things that we need to simplify, either simplify through distribution like this problem, like this first step, um, or problems where you have uh, like terms on the same side um, and a fair number. So we're going to simplify these two like terms first, we get y plus 8. We're going to subtract y. We always tend to move our variables first because it just sets us up to uh, be able to see things that we can recognize. Now we're moving the constants um, and then divide by 2 and we get y equals 7. So pretty straightforward. Um, Looks very intimidating from the beginning, but if we just apply the relatively simple normal steps, we can just solve for the variable. Now this looks intimidating again because we have radicals, but it's really not. We're still going to move the variables onto the same side. Um, and we get 6 rad 2 equals 18 uh, rad 18 t minus rad 2 t. I'm assuming those t's are outside. They look like they're outside and that the radicals are just coefficients. Now, we cannot combine these. Even though they have the same variable, their coefficients cannot be combined because we can't combine unlike radicals. However, we can simplify rad 18. Rad 18 can be simplified. So we would get rad 9 rad 2 t minus rad 2 t. And the reason why we do that is because rad 9 is a perfect square. So that rad 18 really becomes 3 rad 2 t minus rad 2 t. And now they do have, now they are like terms, not only because they're variables, but we can also combine their coefficients. So that simplifies. This left side still stays 6 rad 2. 3, we're going to deal with the coefficients. That's 3 and negative 1, so we get 2 rad 2 t. And now we can get rid of the 2 rad 2. 2 rad 2, divide both sides. The rad 2s will cancel. That makes 1, and the 6 and 2 simplify to 3, so t equals 3. That's a fun one. Um, and again, relatively simply, we just have to know that sometimes we have to simplify and what we're looking for. So we have a variable with a fraction as its coefficient, one half, inside of a fraction. So we have a fraction of a fraction. I'm going to just try to keep it simple. Instead of simplifying, get rid of that 5 in the denominator with a 5 in the numerator. And that gives me 1 half x plus 3 equals negative 10. So again, something that looked somewhat intimidating ends up being relatively simple. So we move the, the 3 by subtracting 3. We get rid of the 1 half by multiplying by its reciprocal. And we get x equals negative 26. So we're seeing these examples where it's quite easy to isolate and simplify the fraction. We just have to recognize and be familiar through lots of practice. So you want to keep doing these types of problems. This is an inequality, so we know that we're going to end up with an inequality as, um, as a solution. We're going to divide by negative 7, and much like, sorry, much like what we've been working on in class, with inequalities, whenever we multiply or divide both sides by a negative, both sides of an inequality by a negative, we have to flip the inequality sign. 
And when we change a variable from negative to positive by moving it across the inequality, that is the way we represent uh, that movement or that changing of the sign. We can either physically move it or we can flip the inequality sign, which represents it. Absolute values also, again, first thing, make sure that the absolute value is isolated, isolated first, which it is. And so that value can be either positive 12 or negative 12. So we set that equal to both of those values. Inside this box can either be a 12 or a negative 12 because the absolute value of 12 would produce 12 and the absolute value of negative 12 would also produce 12. So uh, that's our reasoning behind absolute values is we separate them into those two values. Let's add three, x equals 15, add three, x equals negative nine. We're gonna put our solutions in numerical order in a solution set, um, or they said it, say, x is equal to. So we see in this example, we have to isolate before we do those two negative things, uh, or the, the positive and negative. So when we isolate, we get negative eight. And at this point, we don't have to do any further work because no absolute value is ever gonna produce a negative solution. So, or a negative value. So my answer is gonna be no solution. We can't make that determination until we isolate. So we still have to isolate before we make that, um, that answer. Now, notice we have inequalities now with absolute values. Our first step is still to isolate. We still have to isolate. We're going to get rid of that negative one-fifth by multiplying by its reciprocal, which is negative five. This leaves me with the absolute value of two plus six. We multiplied both sides by negative. So even with absolute values, we still have to flip the inequality and we get 10. Now this is greater than, so greater than is always going to give us or. If it was less than, it would be an and statement. So we get t plus six is greater than or equal to 10 or t plus six is less than or equal to negative 10. So those are the values that can go in there that make it, we're gonna subtract six, we get t is greater than or equal to four or minus six minus six, t is less than or equal to negative 16 if we had to graph it, and that will be our answer. In an or, we can write it as two statements, but let's make sure that our solutions look pretty good. Uh, negative 16, zero, four, uh, closed circle going greater than, closed circle going less than, yeah. So those are, that is, you do that in case your answer is all real numbers, but not in this case. So t is greater than or equal to four, or, T is less than or equal to negative 16. Uh, here we are factoring again. We always want to, uh, first one is set equal to zero. So we'll subtract five. We also could have, com uh, we could have uh, completed the square. I think that's what it is. I think that's what we call it. That's interesting. Uh, I'm gonna set it equal to zero and see what we get. That is minus 12 equals zero. Um, is it in standard form? Yes. Is there a common factor? No. Uh, is it a special case, meaning is it a binomial square or a difference to square? It's not a difference to square, and it's not a binomial square because this is not a perfect square. So we can go to five, which is a times c. a is one, c is negative 12. So factors of negative 12 are one and 12, two and six, three and four. My signs are different because that's the only way you can get a product of negative. And this sign tells me that the bigger is gonna be positive. And the signs have to be different. So we do this, we get 11, we get four and we get one. This is equal to my middle value. 
positive 1. So I'm going to rewrite this trinomial as a polynomial, four terms, and I'm going to take these values, negative 3 and 4, and I'm going to split this to produce a four-term uh, equation or expression on the left side. And notice negative 3x and positive 4x get me back to my positive 1. Now we're going to factor by grouping. We're going to factor out here, factor out there. Common factor is x. Common factor is 4. And I know I did it right because these must be the same inside the parentheses. I'm going to pull those out. I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to factor out that x minus 3. And if I factor it out, I'm left with x plus 4. So that would produce that. And now we have two numbers multiplying to make 0. So we're going to use the 0 property rule. And we know that one of these must be equal to 0. So we're going to set them equal to 0. We'll add 3. x equals 3. We're going to subtract 4 x equals negative 4, so my solutions for x are negative 4 and 3. That's pretty good. Uh, again, they don't put it in numerical order, but you should put it in numerical order. It's always good. Um, notice we only have one variable, so we can actually solve for the variable. Let's isolate the variable. We get 25. We have our variables being squared. What's the inverse of squaring? square rooting. So we'll take the square root of both sides. The square root of x equals, uh, square root of x squared equals x. Whenever we take the square root of a variable being squared, we have to introduce plus or minus. So my answer is plus or minus 5. The square root of 25 is a perfect square, uh, and that is the high school way of writing plus or minus 5. If you need to write it like that, that's fine also. Number 10, two variables, or 2x, uh, x to the second, x to the first. So we'll set it equal to 0. 1 is set equal to 0. 3x squared plus 5x minus 2 equals 0. Is it in standard form? Yes. Is there a common factor? No. Is it a special case? Nope. It's not a binomial square because it's Neither the first or the third are perfect squares, and it's not difference of squares because it's not two terms. So we'll do a times c. a is 3, c is negative 2, that's negative 6. Factors of negative 6 are 1 and 6, 2 and 3. Signs are different because it's negative. Bigger is going to be positive again, and the signs have to be opposite. So we get 5 and 1. There is my middle. My middle is positive 5, so I'm going to take these two values, negative 1 and 6, and I'm going to turn this into 3x squared minus x plus 6x minus 2 equals 0. We're going to do factor by grouping, and sorry, i got to do this. Um, sorry, I'm just uh, setting up that. Perfect. And we're going to factor by grouping. So we look at the first one. We can factor out an x. There is no coefficient. So if we take an x, that's the tricky part. Take x from negative x, you get negative 1. We're going to look at the second pairing. We're going to factor out a 2, and we get 3x minus 1 equals 0. I know I did it right because these are the same. And if we take out that 3x minus 1, that leaves us with x plus 2 equals 0. Product of two numbers that equals 0. Set each one equal to 0 and solve for x. x plus 2 equals 0. We're going to add 1. 3x equals 1. Divide by 3. x equals 1 third minus 2, minus 2, x equals negative 2. And so my solution is negative 2, 1 third, and that's pretty good. Moving right around. All right, systems of equations. So systems of equations, I'm going to, I'm actually going to 
let's do this. Let's get rid of that number so we can see a little bit better. So this is number 11. We'll write that up here. Um, so we, can, we can't solve this because we have two variables. And when you have two variables, you can never find out what each one equals. So what we want to do is see if we can cancel one of those variables. Well, if we use the addition, if we add the columns, if we add the x's together, add the y's and the constants, and notice they're in the same form. That's kind of important. I don't think I stressed that in some other video, but this is in standard form ax plus by equals c, and both of those equations have to be in the same format. It doesn't have to be in standard. It can be in slope intercept. It can be in point slope, whatever. Not point slope, but uh, point slope's not going to work because there's parentheses, but it needs to be simplified into one of those. So if we add that column, we get 8x. The reason why we like adding is because these y's cancel and you get 16 and we've isolated one of the variables, x equals 2. And now we pick one of the other equations. I'm going to just pick the top one for simplicity. I'm going to plug in my x value, which is 2. And now we notice again, we only have one variable, which is beneficial to us minus 6, negative 2y equals 0, divide by negative 2, y equals 0, and so my coordinate is going to be x comma y. Make sure that you put that as a coordinate because it wants to know where these are two linear equations, so they represent lines, and they want to know where they intersect. What point do these two lines share? Well, the point that they share is 2 comma 0. 2 comma 0 is a solution for both of these equations. This is a little bit more complex. We have a parabola here and a linear equation. So that would be a little bit hard. We can't really cancel, but we can use the substitution method. So we see that y equals 1 half x squared. So in the other equation, we can substitute that, which is nice because we get 7x equals, instead of y, we're going to write 1 half x squared plus 24. And why do we like that? Because now we don't have two variables. We only have one variable. Now, it is one is being squared, one is not. So I'm going to minus 7x from both sides. I'm setting it equal to 0. I have 1 half x squared minus 7x plus 24. Now, I don't like that my coefficient is 1 half. So I am going to multiply everything by 2. What that does is that gets me to have a 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 1 half gives me x squared minus 14x plus 48. Now that looks nice. So set equal to 0 was OK. 2 was standard form, yes. 3 is common factor, no. But we actually got rid of it. So we kind of did some funness. Uh, special case, perfect uh, binomial square, no. 48 is not a perfect square. And it's not difference of squares because it's three terms. Difference of squares has two terms all the time. So we'll do a times c. a is 1, c is 48. Factors of 48. Factors of 48 are 1 and 48, 2 and 24, 3 and 16, 4 and 12, 5, no, 6 times 8 is 48. And that's it. Uh, my signs are the same. They're either both positive or both negative, because that's the only way you can get a positive through the product. And then this tells me that they're both negative. Negative, 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 negative. So we get negative 49, negative 26, negative 18, negative 16, and negative 14. Which one equals my middle? 14. So I know that negative 6 and negative 8 are going to be my middle terms. 0 equals x squared minus 6x minus 8x plus 48. 
we are going to factor by grouping. There's one little trickiness here that we need to see. So we'll factor out an X. You get X minus six. We have to be aware that my first term in my second group is negative. So I have to factor out a negative eight. I get X minus six and that's zero equals. And I did it correctly. I have X minus six in both of those parentheses. So if I pull out the X minus six, I get X minus eight. I have the product of two things multiplying to make zero. So I'm going to set each one equal to zero. One of those must be zero because that's the only way you get the product of two numbers equaling zero. So we'll add six. We'll add eight. And those are my two solutions to the uh, system six comma eight. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Those are the X values. Oh, I'm almost, almost made a mistake. So those are my two X values. How do you get two X values? Well, think about it. I told you that we have a parabola and a linear line. So notice that we're actually going to have two points of intersection in these types. So one where X is six and one where X is eight. So now I have to go back and plug those X values back into either of these equations. It doesn't matter. Um, let's do this one. Y equals one half X squared. Cause that's just fun. Y equals one half X squared. So when X equals six, we get Y equals one half six squared. We're going to do the exponent first. We're always going to do six squared, which is 36 and Y equals 18. So that coordinate would be six comma 18. That would be one intersecting point. And then the other equation was when X was eight, eight squared is 64. Half of 64 is 32. So when we plug in eight, we get 32. So those are the two locations where the two uh, linear and nonlinear equations will um, intersect. That's a good one. Uh, another fun one where, um, I mean, it is actually relatively simple. You're just going to, again, substitute the absolute value of X is one plus three. The absolute value of X is four. And we know X can either equal four or X can equal negative four. And we'd again plug in four. Hmm. Ah, so the coordinates are, oh, so my coordinates are actually four, one and negative four, one. Um, that was kind of tricky because you say, hey, what if I plug it in here? Well, we need to understand that Y equals one is also like Y equals, sorry, zero X plus one. That's how we can see that. So when we plug in four for X, four times zero is zero plus one is one. So when we plug in four, we get one. And then if we plug in negative four and for X, negative four times zero is zero plus one. So we again get that value for uh, the thing. Now let's talk about the graph. So let's look at this one because this is kind of good for conceptual. Uh, we're going to do a little additional understanding. If we had to graph these, what does that look like? Well, that looks like this. So um, when we have, well, let's graph this one first. Let's graph Y equals zero because Y equals zero is pretty straightforward. Um, oh, let's not do it in yellow. Let's, oh, sorry. Let's not do it in yellow. Let's do it in blue. So we'll do that in blue. And if we have to plot some points, Y equals one. Well, where does Y equal one? Well, y equals one is here. Where else does it? Because it doesn't matter what I plug in for x, my y is always going to be one. And that looks like this. So that equation is actually 
uh, that graph, should I say, the solution to that graph looks like this. Because if we picked any point on there, if we picked, let's go back to this, am I good? And we'll see. If I pick this x value or that coordinate, that is negative 7, 1. This is negative 4, 1. This is 8, 1. Sorry, that's negative 8, 1. And this is 8, 1. And this is 10, 1. And we notice that every value, y equals 1. Because remember, this equation can be seen as y equals 0x plus 1. Slope of 1 is, slope is 0. 0 is a fraction is 0. And remember, it's rise over run. So we go up 0 and right 1. Up 0, right 1 would make a horizontal line. Now let's look at this absolute value. Um, x, the absolute value of x equals y plus 3. That's kind of crazy. Um, we're going to get, uh, we're going to get, if we plug in, if we plug, oh, let's do that. Okay. Uh, and I, I, I sort of, typically you see absolute values. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Let's, uh, now I know where I'm going. Sorry. Uh, absolute value of x equals y plus 3. I'm going to subtract 3. And I'm going to get the equation y equals the absolute value of x minus 3. This is a shift. And if we had y equals the absolute value of x, that graph looks like this. It looks like a v. Um, and so that negative 3 is just going to shift it um, down. It's going to shift it down 3. Because um, if we plug in 0 for x, we get negative 3. So let's pick a color. Let's pick green. Um, so let's go back to this. So let's do this. Green, if we plug in 0, we get negative 3. 1, 2, 3. If we plug in 1, we get negative 2. If we plug in negative 1, we still get negative 2. If we plug in 2, we get negative 1, plug in negative 2, negative 1, so we get that V shape. And that V shape is going to look like this. We'll do green. And we get, whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. I thought I did a line. Let's do that. Let's pick those colors again. No, I want a harder green. And that should work. Good. And bingo. Bongo. And where do they intersect? Guess where they intersect? Yes, at negative 4, 1 and 4, 1. Those are the two intersecting points of those two graphs. So that just coincides with it. Uh, it, it shows that the answer is correct. Um, OK, this is pretty straightforward. This is not any harder. The thing that we need to remember is that these two equations need to be in similar formats. Um, and it's probably better if we uh, have whole numbers. So with this equation, I'm going to multiply it by 2, which would get rid of all these denominators. So if I multiply each piece by 2, I get 3x minus y equals negative 1. And this equation, I'm going to set equal to, I'm going to put it in standard form, so I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides, and I'm going to subtract 1 to move that positive 1 to the other side. So I get negative 3x plus y equals negative 1. I can combine columns. I don't have to manipulate it. Uh-oh, look what's going to happen. So if we combine all those columns, we get 0 is equal to negative 2. Well, is that a true or false statement? That's a false statement. So this is going to be no solution. These lines are uh, these lines are parallel. So there are no um, there are no intersecting lines. Uh, they're parallel because they are different equations. If they were the same equations. Um, then they would be 
uh, on top of each other, and they, the answer would be all points on the line. There would be an infinite number of solutions, and I'm a big stickler on what that answer looks like because I don't care how many, I care where. Where is that intersecting? We wanted to know where the intersecting points were here, not that there were two points. So I, I have a different um, uh, understanding of what I want when uh, those lines are the same line and they lie upon each other. So they have an infinite number of intersecting points, but they are located on the line. All right, let's try the warm-up problems. Uh, I guess we should have done those warm-ups at the beginning, but it's okay. Simplify the expression. We're going to combine like terms. These are like terms. We have constants and we have variables. Whenever we combine like terms, we combine their coefficients and we get 5xy minus 1.5. That's pretty simple. Um, we're always going to put in standard form where the variable comes before the constant. In order to simplify, we're going to distribute. And after we distribute, are there like terms? Yes, there are. And 2x plus 50 would be my answer. This is the absolute value. So we're simplifying absolute value are grouping symbols. And we have exponents. And then we have subtraction and addition. So PEMDAS or GEMDAS, we're going to do grouping symbols. So we're going to take the absolute value of 5, which is what is the distance of 5? The distance of 5 is 5 minus 3 plus 2 to the fourth. Now we're going to do exponents. So 2 to the fourth is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 16. And now we're going to do subtraction before addition because we do it left to right. 5 minus 3 is 2 plus 16 is 18. So that one is 18. That's a nice one. Oh, yeah. So again, we have exponents and we have grouping. So we're going to do the grouping. We're going to take the absolute value of negative 8, which is 8 to the 2 thirds. Remember, I think in worksheet number one, we talked about having fractions as exponents. And this numerator is still going to be the exponent, but the denominator is going to be the radical. So rad 3 of 8 squared. So we need to, what's going to get rid of a rad 3 is a 3 to the, or is a some a, a base to the third power. So there's two ways. We could simplify that and write 64 and deal with it. But I know that 8 is 2 to the third. And so uh, 2 to the third is good. And do you know that you can exchange those? I don't know if you knew that. You can flip those. Those are the same thing. 2 to the third to the second is the same as 2 to the second to the third. They both make 2 to the sixth. But the reason why is because do you see me being able to cancel that? So we're left with the base, which is 2 squared, which equals 4. And that's a nice, efficient way of being able to not have to use a calculator for that problem. All right. That's worksheet number six. Not too bad. Should be proficient. And if you can work at that speed, it's going to be very, very beneficial to you in the academic decathlon. It is about that balance between speed and accuracy, and that only comes with familiarity and practice. Good luck.